Welcome to Beaver's Hobby Channel and welcome to my new series of budget 120th scale micro touring car. In this series, I am going to modify a WO Toys K989 into a fast and solid touring car to run by using as little money as possible. Starting from this video, where I will give you a short review of this car, comparing it with the older batch from 2016. I will also show you how to inspect this car for fixing and tuning. Finally, in this video, I am going to show you the stage 1 of tuning or rather how to fix and prepare it for first run. And of course, the actual test drive. Also, at the end of each video, I will have the total spend for this project. So, we can see if this really is a budget touring car or a money pit. Let's get started. Inside the box, we have a car with 2S LiPo battery, 400mAh installed, a transmitter, a charger, and a bag of gears. The transmitter is 2.4GHz and requires 4 AA batteries, which are not included in the package. WL Toys uses different protocol from other manufacturers, so you can't just buy this car into any other radio, unless you got a multi-protocol transmitter with NRF24 Allo 1 chip. Let's take a look at the car. Please excuse some changes from original, because I filmed some of this after stage 1 modification. This is 120S scale full proportional for both steering and throttle. The ESC is 2-in-1 unit and has full forward, brake and reverse function. The servo is 5G digital servo with 3 wires, so you can upgrade the electronics very easily. And the motor is 130 brush motor. The suspension is non-adjustable double wishbone suspension. There are two clips on each shock absorbers to adjust the spring tension. Stock wheelbase is 98mm, adjustable to 102mm. The width of the car is 74mm, which is wider than standard Millizet all-wheel drive. It has full ball bearing equipped from wheel hub to center shaft. First difference between 2018 model and 2016 model is that now every car is equipped with metal swing shaft as standard. The swing shaft is the same size as Millizet. Front and rear wheels have the same width at 8.5mm and 27mm diameter. The hull is the same as Mini Z, so the wheels are interchangeable. The tires are soft rubber with some pattern. To be honest, these tires have really low grip and wear out rather quickly. The differentials are gear dips and are almost the same as the one in Mini Z. However, as I said earlier, the car is wider than Mini Z, so they get around this problem by extending the drive cups, making this somewhat the weak point of the car because they break easier than shorter drive cups. The other difference between this car and the older one is the lower suspension arms are now equipped with metal ball heads, making the suspension much smoother. The final difference is now it includes reduction gears, 15T, 19T and 21T pinions, 27T spur gear and a rear gear for 102mm wheelbase. However, upon inspection, the motor mount has changed from oval holes to round holes making it unable to adjust the gear mesh without modification, rendering the included gears almost useless. There are two combinations of gearing that you can use without modifying the motor case. One is the original 17T pinion with 29T spur. Two is 19T pinion with 27T spur. Another thing that is not really a difference but an improvement is that now the transmitter has less dead zone in the center of the steering, making the car easier to control. But still, this is by no means the best RTR radio. The steering is too heavy for my liking, and it has only steering and throttle trim. One last thing I want to point out is what should have been included in the box but isn't, a tool to remove the wheels. What you need is a 4mm hex socket. Without this, it will be very difficult to remove the wheels. I have bought this cross wrench for a dollar. A dollar with free shipping. Come on, it is so cheap that I should have put it in the box and be done with it. Let's move on to how to inspect the car for fixing and modifying. The tools you need for disassembling the car are Phillips screwdrivers for more screws, 1.5mm hex screwdriver or Allen key for rear tow bar joints, 4mm hex socket to remove the wheels. I start by shaking the differential smoothness. When you grab one wheel and turn it, the other side should turn the other way with constant resistance. What I say here is, 
out of the box, this car has sticky differential, indicating there is some blocking inside the diff. We can rebuild the diff with thick grease and make it work like ball diff. I'll come back to this later in the series. For now, let's just make it work properly. The next thing is the smoothness of the suspension arms. You have to partially disassemble the car to check if every suspension arm can move up and down freely. As you can see here, this upper arm is good. But when I check the lower arm, it is very sticky. Then, check all the linkages with ball. We can see that some of them are very sticky as well. All of this will make the handling unpredictable. I'm leaving this fix for stage 2. The last thing to check is drivetrain smoothness. This one needs a bit more disassembling. You have to remove the motor pinion and then check if the car can roll freely. This is one of the biggest complaints of this car because it has sticky drivetrain out of the box. Disassembling it further into gearbox and we can see that the problem comes from tight gear mesh between differential crowd gear and pinion. Driving with this mesh and you will strip all the gear from diff and center pinion in no time. Also, all the slots for bearings are a bit too tight, making drivetrain even stickier. All these problems will make the car run very badly because it will start moving at higher speed and there is no rolling when you let off the throttle. It will also make motor and ESC run very hot and potentially break in the car's electronics. Let's move on to the stage 1 modification or rather fixing it for first drive so it won't break. In this stage, I am going to fix the differential and drivetrain so it is smooth and make the ESC and motor run cooler and happier. To fix the differential, first disassemble it by removing three screws. Pull it apart and there are three bevel gears inside. Try turning the drive cup and this one is very stiff and won't turn easily. This is because the shaft is too big for the hole. Now pull the middle bit off and remove this screw to separate gear from drive cup. This is the disassembled differential. All you need to do is cleaning off excess plastic, especially the drive cup shafts. If the middle plate that holds the bevel gears also has some excess plastic, you will need to clean it off as well. The way I do is starting by working on the middle plate with art knife. Then smoothen it out with a file. Try to test fit it regularly, so you won't file it off too much. If the diff doesn't shut properly, you might need to file out these three poles too. If there is excess plastic on bevel gears, you will need to file them down as well. Now for the drive cup shaft, use sandpaper to sand out the shaft until they can spin freely in the diff. Once you finish cleaning off excess plastic, you can put it back together and check if it works correctly and smoothly. This one is almost ready to put in the car. After test fit inside the gearbox, I can see that gear mesh is still too tight. So the only thing to do is making the diff thinner. What you need to do is take the shorter end of the diff and file down the outer case. Once everything fits properly, and the diff can spin freely like this. You can rebuild the diff with grease. And put it in the car. One other thing I noticed is the gearbox case is too small for the diff and there is some rubbing inside. This is an easy fix. Just dry the inside of the upper gearbox down so the diff won't rub against the case. Another thing that is good to do is to sand out all the ball bearing slots so they are not too tight. Be careful not to sand them down too much and you'll be fine. Now it's time to put the car back together and do some running by trimming the throttle until the wheel starts spinning. You will see that drive train is still a bit stiff and it needs a lot of trim just to get it rolling. Now you can let it run but be careful. Once the car hits low voltage cutoff and stops running, you need to turn it off immediately. Otherwise, you will run the risk of damaging battery. You can see that the car has smooth drive train when the wheels start spinning with only one press of trim button. Now I can proceed to clean and loop all the ball bearings. Loop the swing shafts. And rebuild the car with grease in the gearbox. 
let's put it on my speed checker. The speed from stock gearing is 37 km an hour. One other thing that I suggest you to do is moving the ball head on the servo horn to upper horn so the car can turn tighter and has smaller turning circle. And finally, the last thing for stage 1, you should remove the cover of 2-in-1 unit to let the air flow and decrease the chance of overheating. Now that I finished fixing it, let's go for a test drive. Thanks to our viewer who has suggested that I should make a track and compare the performance of each mod that I'll be doing. I have also built a lap timer, so no need for stopwatch, and this is more accurate. As you can see, the car is slithering about. From what I can see here, not because the chassis is not good, but because the tires do not have enough grip to handle this much power. To drive within the track and not spinning out all the time, I need to go pretty slowly. These are lap times of 10 valid laps. And as you can see, the time is all over the place, ranging from 13 seconds to 16 seconds. I reckon if it has better tires and better suspension, the lap time will improve immensely. This is just a start, so the total spin so far is only the car and some elbow grease. In the next video in stage 2, I am going to fix sticky suspension and see if I can improve the time without spending any money. That's it for this video. Please subscribe if you haven't done it yet and hit the bell icon to get notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.